I've been doing my webcomic since 2017, and every year I put together a collected version of it into a book. So I kind of wanted to share, as I set up the one this year, how I do that. So as I said, I started my webcomic in 2017, and I made the first collected issue of the comics the following year, which that would be 2018. So. As I did this, I did my own research on it. I figured out how to do it. I'm publishing it on KDP, uh, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. I feel like I said it backwards, but I said it right the first time. And I found out a lot of stuff over the years and trial and error and the best way to put together my book. I always wanted to show how I make these books. Uh, every time I do it, I'm like, oh, I should have recorded that. But uh, this time as I'm putting together my fourth book, I thought I would share how I'm doing it. One of the, so here, here are the three previous books that I have, and you'll see they're different sizes. So the first one is this one right here, which I did at a much larger size. My comics also used to be a lot bigger than two. It's not exactly 365 pages, but it is from a year, and there are a few days here and there where I would miss it. And then the next year, I decided this was too big. When I finally got it, I was like, oh, that's a good size. And then I got it, and I'm like, this is a gigantic book. So the next year I put together this one, which is, I want to say in the next size down. I forget what the actual size sizes are, but here's this one. And I also changed it because the format of my comic, my web comic had changed to a much smaller format. But also I realized as I printed it, I had a hard time figuring out how they were centered. Then the third year came along and I did a more collected paperback, sort of like the way comic strips are, like I have this issue here of Dennis the Menace. It's kind of like in, oh, it's a little bit bigger. But this, I think this is the smallest size that they allow for paperbacks on Kindle. And this one, I was able to figure out the format of the comics this time around so that they fit more in a regular size along with the book. Now to give a little background, one of the questions that I've been asked is how many of my web comics do I make? Like people go, do you really make one every day? throughout the year. When I first started in 2017, yes. And that was because uh, I will, it, it was more cathartic when I first started. It actually turned out to be something that helped me get through a time period. This first book was really about an emotional time in my life and it was more of a diary. I didn't have a podcast. I just started a website and posted comics. I wasn't doing anything and I was, this was a way to draw every day. My comics were very rough. They are not in the style they are now. Sometimes they were drawn on my phone. Sometimes they were drawn on a napkin or a notebook. Sometimes I was trying to find the style. Like here in the beginning, I was being a little bit more realistic. And that would take a lot of time. So then I tried to dumb it down. And then it got too dumbed down to the point where I was unhappy with the way it looked. It looked very childish. And it kind of, and it still changes from day to day. I do try to draw every day. Uh, there will be maybe a day or so that I miss. So I always assume that it's 365 comics when I set up these books. And then another thing that I've been asked is where I get the inspiration. And it really is, I sit down at the end of every day and think about what happened that day. That's why I call the series, uh, Then This Happened. It's, it's really kind of like, and then this happened, and then I draw the thing, and then today, and then this happened, and that's really what the concept of it. So it first started out being a cathartic thing, as I said. There was a year that we were going through uh, just a really rough time. And then the second year is when we had gotten through that time and how our lives had changed. And by now I had started the podcast, I was doing the website, I was doing public events, so it was kind of like growing from this really rough time to how we were adapting and how our lives had changed. And the main reason that I started this also is because I had just begun using Instagram. And one thing that I always realized is something would happen and I would forget to take a picture of it. Afterwards, I'd be like, oh, I should have got a photo of that. So this way I could draw about it later. I could even do multiple things because I'd always forget and I'd and then I'd post this on Instagram and it'd be like, oh, here you go. And it's just as good as a photo because people understand that it's like I'm talking about my day and they'll ask me about, did that really happen or what happened after that? That's the other inspiration behind these web comics is it's just, I always forget to take pictures of things and post it on my blog or on Instagram. The other thing too is the way that I do it, I set up to do it every night. 
I think back on the day and what's something that happened. What's something that I can make note of? Some days there'll be something that happens where it's like, that's what I'm drawing about today. Other days I'll have to think back on the day and go, what's a little thing, a thought that I had, uh, something that I remember, something just odd that I looked at, anything, maybe an email I received, things like that. And then what I'll do is I'll, as I'm thinking about it, I start processing it in my head. I only do four panels. So I'll process kind of like, what should it say? How am I going to describe it? Is there a narrative? Is there going to be talking? And I'll start picturing it in my head. And usually while I'm making dinner, that's about about when I do it. And I'll just kind of think about it while I'm setting up dinner. Then I'll sit down and start drawing that out. And then I'll see if it works or if I can really fit it in there. And uh, I will admit, sometimes they don't. Sometimes I get what they mean. And then when I post them, people be like, this part didn't make sense. And it's like, oh yeah, you're right. That didn't make sense. It makes sense since I was there, but I've, that's part of the process is learning how to do it, how, how to tell a story, first of all, in four panels, and second, so that people who weren't there can still understand it, even if they only saw one comic. And then the other thing, too, is that I never spend more than 15, 20 minutes drawing it, because otherwise I would just be drawing comics all day. I wouldn't be able to do other things, or it would just be, it would be a really detailed comic and I wouldn't be able to do the other projects that I have, or I'd be, it, it would just be too much. And I want this, I think it kind of keeps in the diary style of the way it started. It's imperfect. It's kind of a sketch. It looks like it's just, I took a pen and did it. And actually that is the way I draw it. I don't sketch out the thing first. Like I said, I picture it in my head and then I try and see if I can make that happen on a first try. And since I've recently moved to using a tablet for this, I can at least delete or undo something instead of like, sometimes when I first started, I told you I would draw on napkins. I'd have to try and fix that in real time. Actually, one trick that I learned was what I would do instead of drawing on a piece of paper, and then if I messed up, I would draw on post-it notes, because one, they were the size kind of, of what the panels were, and if I messed it up, I could just use a new post-it. And then I would paste them onto a page, and then take a picture of it, and then draw the boxes around them in the tablet that I have, or on the computer. But thing is, is that also became very time consuming. It's a lot easier just to draw on my tablet and use it. Now, as I was drawing these, like the first year I said, I was kind of, it was more cathartic and I was drawing about something serious. One of the interviews when I first started doing the podcast was with actually the guy who inspired me to do these comics. He had actually released a book himself. And one of the instructions that he had about cartooning was to actually do an autobiographical four panel comic and see if you could tell the story. And later on, I contacted this author and actually got the chance to go to Chicago. Chicago and meet him in person. I made a a paper copy of like maybe the first month of the comic at home. Like I just made it so I could give it to him. And he read it and he wrote me back later and he said that this was good in the sense that other people might find this helpful too, just to read along with it. Even though it doesn't solve anything, it doesn't have any answers. It's just nice to share this problem with people who are possibly going through the same problem. And uh, that was why I started putting together the idea of making a collection of the book for the past year. And uh, I wanted to see if anybody else might be interested in it too. I didn't really know much about making books or selling them online at the time. So I started doing my research. And then after researching, I came up with a way to use Google Docs and Google Photos to put these together. What I had done is when I drew on the tablet, I was backing up all of my drawings to Google Photos. So whenever I drew something and saved it, and it went into this folder where the drawing program that I use would save the drawings that I did, Google Photos on the tablet would then back it up online. I just wanted to have them so I could have that year ago today thing where it would just basically show me my own comic in the past year so I could go, oh, I remember that happened this day. So that was the reason that I did that, to look back on what I've done. It was a happy accident later on, but I hadn't figured it out by the time I did the first book. Well, my first book, what I originally did was I was posting them on my website and I was using Google Docs to put it together. So I downloaded the book template for the size that I was gonna use, this big honkin' size this time on KDP. So I downloaded the template they had and I uploaded it to Google Docs. Now the reason I did that is because I figured out Google Docs lets me add photos by URL. So if they're hosted somewhere, I can add that URL and it will download the photo into the document. I was hosting them on my website. So what I did is I would go comic by comic by comic over the period of months on my website and I would copy the image URL and then I would go to the Google Doc and then I would paste in, here's the image URL and it would put it on the page. And then I'd do it, go back to the website again and then copy the URL and then paste it on the 
the document. Now, as you can see, that was not the quickest way to do it, but that was the way that I did the first book, page by page by page. Then, after I realized that I was backing them up on Google Photos, when I clicked on the drop down for the ad URL, it said, or photos. But at the time, I wasn't organizing them in a way that I could just scroll through and know which one was which. I would go to Google Photos, the comic that I just drew would be there, and then I would put it in a folder, say like January of 2020. And I would do that each night after I drew them and it would be backed up. When I put the books together, it makes it super easy. And it's one of the easiest ways that I've found over the years to put the book together. And I believe that's what I started doing when I put together the second book. The reason I put the books together was it was really, I was just kind of doing it for myself. I was like, I can make a paperback version of my book and then me and my family could get a copy of it. It didn't even occur to me that I could actually start selling it in public. I thought it was just print on demand and then maybe you could order some and sell them. But when you print a book on KDP, you can put it on Amazon. It is on Amazon. It's right there. It creates a page for it. So that didn't occur to me when I was doing this. I just thought it was print on demand and like maybe I could get my own copies. I promoted the book and I actually sold a few. Uh, some people even contacted me, much like what the cartoonist I spoke to earlier had said. They enjoyed reading the book. They appreciated it because it was just somebody going through the same thing. It was just nice to know that other people were out there or they could compare it to what they were going through. It was, it was nice. I didn't expect that. It was really just kind of for my family and uh, other people did like it. And that's the beauty of putting things online. That's the beauty of being able to publish a book. You never know who it'll resonate with. So that was really cool. But I was able to get my own copies. That was the thing. I still could get my own copies and you can get them at printing costs. So they're at a discounted price. I could order a whole bundle of them. I had started doing like pop-up events and tabling at shows. I was able to buy these books, get them delivered to my house, take them and sell them at these shows. And another thing is Amazon, not only does it put it on Amazon, and give you a page for the book, but there's the opportunity to have them as extended distribution through Amazon. So what Amazon does is they have the ability for distributors to buy books in bulk to put them into different like chains across the bookstores of America or in libraries to you know, subject matters and things like that. My books actually did, I, I thought, no, this will never happen, but I put it up anyway. I'm like, what's it hurt? It's literally just a checkbox. But that was how some of the people who contacted me found out about the book. They got it in a, a bookstore. I believe it was a bookstore. I can't remember if it was a library or a bookstore, but that was kind of neat. And it was, all this stuff was what I had discovered just by putting together my comic into a book that I was able to sell. And on top of it, Amazon prints it all for me. So I'm gonna finish putting all my web comics into these pages for the book that I showed you where I added it in Google Docs. And then I'm gonna come back later on with another video talking about like the dimensions of the book that I used and about those distribution channels that I talked about and how I can get it out there and the things creating the store site and also having an author page, putting them in the extended distribution for stores and things like that. So I'm gonna talk more about that later. I'm gonna finish working on this book right now and uh, show you where I'm at in the next video.